Hey guys, this is Jay Calderon with Jay Unboxing, and we are going to be discussing something that has popped up in the news a bit recently, and that's the goals and aspirations of the sport's biggest star, Canelo Alvarez. Over the last few weeks during the press run for his showdown with Abney Yildirim on the 27th of this month, Saturday that is, Alvarez has stressed his desire to not only go down as one of the greatest Mexican fighters ever, but to do things no fighter from Mexico has ever done. It's important for me and Eddie Reynoso, his trainer, because very few people have achieved becoming undisputed champions, said Canelo. And that's the short-term goal for us, to win all the titles at 168 pounds. Obviously, no Mexican has ever done it, so that's our short-term goal, to keep making history. And that's what we want. Eddie and I have always wanted the best, and we want to keep making history. To some extent, we fans have grown accustomed to fighters making such bold claims, and we effectively chalk it up to promotional language. And rest assured, they will use that language to promote Canelo, as they should. However, it carries a bit more weight in reference to Canelo when you realize the position in which the world super middleweight champion finds himself. Like almost no other fighter in the sport, barring a couple of heavyweights, Canelo finds himself in a position to legitimately achieve goals that most fighters wouldn't even dare to speak aloud. And let me preface the rest of what I'm about to say. This is coming from someone who hasn't always been easy on the red-headed superstar. For years, I have made claims that I don't find him to be that special, enigmatic star that the sport has thrived off of in years past. He wasn't as polarizing as a Floyd Mayweather or as must-see TV as a Mike Tyson. Nothing about his style or presentation stood out to me in this awe-inspiring way. He could punch, but wasn't the most dynamic puncher. He has speed, but has been outsped, so to speak, by the likes of Eris Lendi Lara and the aforementioned Money Mayweather. He seemed a much better than average, but not quite truly once-in-a-lifetime fighter. Of course, he has his moments of special, but he similarly has his moments of being a bit underwhelming. For every Amir Khan highlight reel knockout, there are question-raising performances over the likes of Gennady Golovkin. Even his first foray into the big fights, a 10-round unanimous decision over Shane Mosley back in 2012, ultimately went down as a step-up without standing out performance. However, I must admit, in the last year or so, my opinion of the Mexican has changed a little bit. Well, I should say the, the angle at which I view Canelo has altered. Let me explain. If you were to look at Canelo and expect a wrecking ball of a fighter that destroys fighters in his path, you will be disappointed. If you're looking for the sort of fighter that can move the needle with a single sentence or tweet, again, you will be left searching. When looking at Canelo, I have come to the realization that stepping back and looking at the total picture is the only way to truly appreciate the work Canelo has put into his craft. In fairness, enough of the Canelo story has been told to realize those are unrealistic expectations. He is too crafty in the ring to take the sort of risks that guarantee fireworks, and while no fighter at his level is completely humble, he doesn't come across as the type to sit around and think up new catchphrases and monikers that he can market. Instead, what you have with the Guadalajara native is a measured fighter, a fighter calculating his every move both in and out of the ring. This is what I've come to accept. It is not the most thrilling adventure on earth, but it's the lens through which Canelo must be viewed. For a bit of context as to what I mean, let's play a game of sorts. Let's imagine Canelo retired today, at this very moment, and didn't carve out another victory, hold another piece of gold, he's done. At the age of 30, he is already guaranteed that he's a first ballot, no questions asked, front page Hall of Famer. Truthfully, I didn't know that was true until I looked into the numbers and again, took a step back and really put things into their proper perspective. In my personal opinion, and take that for what it's worth, there are three things that land you in Boxing's Hall of Fame. Accomplishments, record, and, let's be real, your box office. Quite frankly, it is hard to argue that Canelo wouldn't be first ballot if he retired today. At the age of 30, Canelo is the sport's biggest star, has dominated at 154 pounds, 160 pounds, and now 168 pounds in terms of titles. He also has beaten a couple of Hall of Famers and over a dozen world or former world champions along the way. And again, he's turning 31 this year. Barring a drastic dip in skills or reflexes or some unforeseen life event taking time off his career, there's a solid chance he might see another five to seven productive years out of his career, especially with how long athletes can hold off father time in this day and age. Recently, there have been numerous arguments made about the all-time great NFL quarterback Tom Brady, one compelling argument illustrating his greatness very well. It's, you, it's taking his career and chopping it into sections. The argument effectively states that if you divided his career down the middle, he'd still make the Hall of Fame using only stats and accomplishments from one side of the divide. 
For Canelo, a similar argument might be able to be made. If he completely unifies at 168 pounds against Caleb Plant and Billy Joe Saunders later this year, and then proceeds to do the same at 175 against the likes of Artur Beterbiev and Dmitry Bivol, granted a Texas size if, you'd be hard-pressed to find someone that could compete with that two- or three-year run. Of course, things like mandatories, delays, pandemics, injuries, promotional wars, and all these sorts of things can lead to being this being much easier said than done. However, when you're the man that prints the money, you tend to make things a lot easier to negotiate. And no, I still don't think Canelo is a perfect fighter that mesmerizes every fight he fights. That's not the goal. His goals are much longer reaching than a singular moment in time. He's looking for timeless and whether he accomplishes all his goals at 168 or moves up and does the same at 175, maybe the challenge of Andre Ward presents itself. Regardless, you'll have to keep watching as he continues to carve out this special run. Anyway, what do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments. What do you think his legacy will ultimately be? What do you think it would be if he retired today? Of course, I will have my prediction for his fight, the aforementioned fight with Yildirim later this week, uh, so be sure to check that out. Be sure to leave a like, a comment, a share, subscribe, and follow. I would love it. Go ahead and do that on Twitter at jcalderon underscore job. You can also email me at jonboxing at gmail.com. And until next time.